Dr. Julie here. Today we're going to be investigating pH. What the heck is pH? Well, it's a scale. Like temperature, which is hot and cold, pH uh, scale has acids on one end and bases on the other. And we can measure it by creating some indicator paper that would tell us around about what the pH of our um, substance is. So what's an acid? Well, the best example of an acid that I can think of is oranges. They're super tasty. Uh, so let's find out what acids taste like. Mm, they kind of have a tangy, sort of sharp flavour to them. Another example is vinegar. Okay, what do bases taste like? Well, let's see. I've got some bicarbonate of soda, which is a base, and it's used in cooking to make cakes rise. I just have the littlest daub on my finger, and I'll give that a taste. Ah, ah, that's terrible. Uh, it's really bitter, and if I rub it between my fingers when it's wet, it makes my fingers all slimy. Ugh. Excuse me. Blah. Oh my goodness. Blah. Blah. So bad. So you just learned why it's not a good idea to taste something to work out what the pH of it is. And things at the extreme ends of the pH scale, very acidic and very basic, can actually harm us. So we are going to make some pH indicator paper to test things so that we don't have to eat them or touch them. And the cool thing is that fruit and vegetables that are purple, red and blue have this substance called anthocyanin in them. And anthocyanin will re react to pH and change different colours. So that's what we're going to use for the basis of our pH paper. Another cool fact is that anthocyanin is the chemical that changes the leaves colour in the winter, in winter and autumn. So if you see leaves going from green to yellow to orange, that is also anthocyanin. All right, we're going to cut up this cabbage into nice chunks. And you may need to get an adult to help with these next steps. So cutting up the cabbage, then we're going to boil it, and then we're going to blend it. So ask your nearest adult for some help. Our cabbage is all chopped up, so we add a little bit of water so that it doesn't dry out while boiling. We get it up to a boil and then we simmer it for 10 minutes or put it to the side for 10 minutes to let the colour leach out. Once the cabbage is boiled and blended, we'll strain it to get the juice out. Look at that purple colour. Isn't that great? The reason I have the board is to stop any spills because we are trying to get the anthocyanin out of the cabbage and use it to stain the paper. And that means the anthocyanin will also stain other things. So we've got our paper. I'm just using some paper towel and a tray to dry it in because again, we don't want to just leave it on the bench. If you don't want your fingers stained, dip the paper into the cabbage juice but leave some dry so that you don't get it on your fingers. And once it's nicely dyed, lay it out on your tray. Do that for our second piece of paper. 
Once we've got our paper ready, it will take about overnight to dry and then tomorrow we'll be ready to test with our brand new pH indicators. Have you checked on your pH indicator paper yet? How did you go? Mine worked pretty well. So now we're going to cut them up into the right size to use as pH indicators. And that's about a centimetre wide and it just needs to be long enough so that you can dip it into something without getting whatever you're dipping it into on your fingers. So we will cut these into about thirds because that will be enough. There we go. Let's test some of the things that we tried yesterday. Now I've got a plastic uh, tray to test things on so that I don't have to put them on the table but also we're going to be testing some cleaning products so I don't want to use something that I eat off of. So let's start with an orange. Squeeze some orange juice onto the tray and dip the indicator paper in. Whoa, look at that. It's gone bright pink. That's because oranges are acidic and the pH paper turns pink when it encounters an acid. Let's try the bicarb of soda. Now, pH paper only works when it's wet. So we're going to have to add a little bit of water to the bicarb of soda. You can do that by dipping your finger into a glass and dipping the water onto the bicarb of soda. And then we add our pH tab. Check it out. It's gone blue. So bases go blue, acids go pink. And if they're really basic, or they, they're far down the pH scale towards the base end, they all also go yellow or green. So that's pretty cool. I have on my tray four other liquids that we can test. This one is shampoo. This one is vinegar. This one is mystery cleaning product number one. And mystery cleaning product number two. Now, if you remember, acids make the paper turn pink. Bases make it turn blue. Do you have any predictions about what colour these different liquids will go when we put the pH indicator in? Let's have a try with the hair condition, uh, the hair shampoo. Interesting. It hasn't really changed colour. That means that it's neither acidic or basic, so its pH is in the middle and we call that pH neutral. What about the next one? Some vinegar. Any guesses about what the vinegar will go? Oh, look at that, very pink. Let's try mystery cleaner number one. Green, so it's very basic. And let's try mystery cleaner number two. Oh, that's also green, so that's very basic. Excellent. I've shown you how your pH indicator paper reacts to different substances. Why don't you have a go at home with some of the things you find around your house? You could try eggs, milk, fizzy drinks, perhaps a drip of tea or coffee. There's all sorts of things for you to try. So ask yourself, what pH could this be? Have a guess and then test it with your pH indicator. And if you want to try some more great science experiments, then go to the Questacon website. We have a whole lot of experiments that you can do in your own home. Keep experimenting and see you soon.